Hi, welcome. I don't know if you're a religious person, but I am. I believe that we all get moments of grace. Moments of grace where God, in a sense, reminds us that we have a calling in life, something that we're suited for. And most of the time we don't listen. For me, one of those defining moments of grace, and thank God I was listening, happened in the second year of my MBA program at UCLA. I was on a pathway that most MBAs were in then, trying to get a job in consulting or investment banking, climbing the corporate ladder, and I wanted to be like them. I took this job because I needed the money. I was a TA for an accounting class. That already tells you that this was to me a steep climb because you know what I think about accounting. I walked into that class and I knew that this was what I was meant to do with my life. I was a teacher. And that's how I still describe myself. I'm a teacher. I'm not a professor. I'm not a researcher. I'm not an academic. I'm not an expert. I'm not a valuation guru. I'm a teacher. That's what I do. It happened that I found that I was interested, fascinated by finance. So that's what I happened to teach. But if I hadn't taught finance, I'd have taught science or math or algebra or accounting or whatever else. But I'm a teacher first and foremost. And for a year and a half, I've been taking a break from my regular teaching. As many of you know, I've been teaching at NYU for 32 years. And last year I took a sabbatical. So from the spring of 2017, was the last semester I taught, I took a year sabbatical. I had an extra half a year to it because I decided to do all my teaching this year in the spring of 2019. So I've been a year and a half away from the classroom. It doesn't mean I haven't been teaching. I've still continued to teach in shorter sessions across the world, but I miss my classroom. I miss being in class and I'll be glad to be back in class in a couple of weeks. And you're saying, why should I care? I'm not at Stern. I can't sit in a new classes. Hey, maybe there's a chance with technology being what it is today that you could sit in my classes. I thought I'd give you a preview of what I'm teaching. And if you're interested, maybe you want to join, join me for this ride. The first class I'm going to be teaching is a corporate finance class. Corporate finance class to the first year MBAs, usually in the second semester of the first year. I don't mean to sound biased, but I will. Corporate finance is the one class that I think everybody should take. I don't care what area you want to work in, what business you're going to be in, what function you're in. Corporate finance is the one finance class that I think everybody should take. It's the ultimate big picture class. You say, what exactly is corporate finance? Corporate finance is a class that covers the first principles that govern how we make decisions in a business. Ultimately, every decision that a company makes, whether that decision be called a production decision, a marketing decision, a strategic decision, is a corporate finance decision. Everything is corporate finance. Now, to give you a sense of what this class is about, let me show you a slide that I show to my class and I structure my entire class around this slide. This is my big picture page for corporate finance. Everything you need in corporate finance is on this page. There are three big principles that encapsulate corporate finance. The investment principle that tells you where you should invest your money, the financing principle that determines whether you should use debt or equity, and the dividend principle that determines how much cash you give back to the investment of the company. And doing all of this, your singular objective is to maximize the value of the business. In this picture, I list out the first principles in common sense terms, and everything we do in this class is built around this picture. So you'll notice session numbers, there are 26 sessions in the class and every session in the class is anchored to this page. There are chapter numbers and those are chapters in my applied corporate finance book, which is so obscenely overpriced that I don't even ask people in my class to buy the book. But if you can, those are the chapters that go with it. And if you decide you are going to take this class and you're a Stern MBA, well, you're welcome to take the class. It meets every Monday and Wednesday starting on February 4th, going through May 13th. And I will see you in class every week. But if you're not at Stern, you're saying, well, I can't come to the class. You're right. Physically, you cannot come to the class, but you might be able to take the class. In fact, let me take the mind out. You can take the class online because every one of these classes is going to be recorded. And while you might not be able to watch the lectures in real time, between the 10.30 and 11.50, that teach every Monday and Wednesday, about two hours after every class, you will see the recording of the class put up. In addition, I will put the slides I use in the class the materials I might draw on during the class, and everything I do in the class will be available online. Including what? Including the tests, the exams, the project. You can pretty much do this class in parallel while I teach the class. 
In fact, you can even check in on the emails I sent to the class as part of the class. Now, there are two other options you have for taking the class if you don't want to do it through my webpage that I have on my, on my website. One is I've created a YouTube playlist for the class where every lecture for the class with links to the slides and the material will be put up. I'm also going to create an iTunes U version of this class where you can take the class on iTunes U. If you have an Apple device, iTunes U is actually a very nice way to take the class. The, the, I'll give you the good news and the bad news on the class if you're going to take it online. The good news is it's free. The bad news is if you're expecting certification, I can't offer that. So there will be no certification, but you can take the entire class. Now, the second class I'm going to teach is evaluation class. Actually, I'm going to teach two versions of this class, one to the MBAs and one to the undergraduates. And the class is pretty much the same class. In fact, it is the same class. You think, what's this class going to be about? It's going to be about valuing just about any type of asset. We'll start with companies, publicly traded companies, because that's where the information is easiest to get. But we'll talk about valuing private companies, individual assets, even things that you don't think of normally in a valuation class. What's the value of Ronaldo to Juventus? What's the value of the New York Yankees? We'll also draw contrast between valuing something and pricing something. You're saying, what's the difference? Well, you're going to find out in this class. I'm going to argue that there are some, some items that can only be priced. For instance, you cannot value Bitcoin and you'll see my reasoning for why, but you can price it. So we'll talk about pricing or valuing just about any asset. I look at valuation through different perspectives, not just through the eyes of an investor or an analyst, but also through the eyes of managers, an activist, or even somebody who regulates a company. We're going to look at valuation from every single angle and every single perspective. Again, as with the corporate finance class, if you are an MBA, you can take the class, but if you cannot take the class, there are other options. You can go to my webcast page and watch the webcast with the slides. You can try the YouTube playlist or the iTunes U version of this class. And these classes will also run through May 13th. The undergraduate class is two sessions longer, but as I said, the valuation of the undergraduate classes are identical. You can, you can pick either one. Now, one aspect of this class that I'd like to draw your attention to is each week in this class, I will do a valuation of the week. You're saying, what the heck is that? I'll pick a company to value. You're saying, what company? Well, I'll pick a company I'm interested in. After all, it's all about me, right? So I'll value the company and I'll put up the valuation with my story and my Excel spreadsheet. So as an example, last time I taught this class, the first week of the class, I valued Tesla. I put up my valuation, my storyline. And here's what I'd like you to try. I'd like you to take my valuation and make it yours. What does that mean? Take those parts of my story you don't like. And rather than bitch and moan about what you don't like, change it. See what you get as your value. And then put your numbers into a shared Google spreadsheet. What I'm trying to do is create a crowd valuation of your company. You know how we've trusted crowds and pretty much everything else, right? I mean, think of how you decide what movies to watch. You look at Rotten Tomatoes, right? Which is a crowd review of the movie. You decide what restaurant to go to. You look at Yelp reviews. Think of this as a crowd valuation. And the more people you can, who can join in in doing this, so after all, optional. I can't force you to do it. I don't force the people in my class to do it. But if you decide to do it, I think we're going to create some very interesting findings in terms of what the crowd thinks about the value, the companies we'll deal with. Now, you might not like these options. And there might be three reasons you might not like the option. Let me offer you some choices. If time is your constraint, watching two 80-minute videos every week for the next 15 weeks, who has the time for that? Life is going to get in the way. If time is your constraint, well, one thing I can offer you is I'll leave these webcasts on for the next year after the class ends. So it'll be through May of 2020. So you can actually stretch this class out over a year and a half. I wouldn't encourage you to do it because you'll forget what you started at the early in the class if you take a year and a half, but you will have more time. So if time is your only constraint, that's one choice. Take the class over a longer stretch, of period, a longer stretch, everything will still be there. If the formatting is your concern, not everybody can watch an 80 minute video on a tablet. I'd rather watch a Netflix movie rather than an 80 minute lecture of myself. So you think 80 minutes is way too long for a lecture? I agree with you. So what I've done is create an online versions of each of my classes where I've taken my 80 minute lectures and made them 12 to 15 minute lectures. I'll let you know a little secret. It wasn't that hard to do. Tells you a little bit about how much I pad my classes. So you can take the class 
And there are free online versions of the class, and that's the good news. The bad news is, again, I can't offer you a certification. If your reason for taking this class is you want a certification, then there's a third choice. And this is something I created in conjunction with NYU. There are certificate versions of my online classes. The, so the, the same compressed classes I talked about, there are certificate versions. The good news if you take the certificate version is you get a much more polished video. I mean, the videos that I shot for my online classes, the free versions, I've shot in front of my own computer, so they're not great. These are done in a studio, they're much better. You will get little more touch because every two weeks I do a WebEx for the class if it's a certificate class and I'll grade your pro. And at the end, you will get a certificate. So if the reason you want to take this class for a certificate, you can take this, but there is a price to pay. Nothing is for free, right? In this case, you will have to pay NYU for the certification and you'll get a little bit of sticker shock when you see the price, but if you can afford it, hey, this might be your choice. All in all, though, I hope you will join me in one of these three classes that I'll be teaching this semester or in the online version of the class. I've been told that those who can do and those who cannot teach. I've never believed that for a moment, but I don't take it personally. I'm, I have a thick skin. Here's my response. I no, I don't mind what other people think. I, I teach because I absolutely love teaching. I mean, I said I answered to no one. I set my own schedule and I do what I I get to change people's thinking for a living. I mean, what else can I ask for? So if you want to do something different, you want to manage other people's money, you want to be a banker, an accountant, an actuary, you want to be a portfolio manager, hey, all the more power to you. That's what makes you happy. I will continue to teach because that's what makes me happy. Life's too short to go for more money or a bigger lifestyle or have a higher profile. Thank you very much for listening.